This video is sponsored by Squarespace. What's going on guys, Vincent here from the thecreativedojo.net. Welcome to another video quick tip. Hope everyone is doing well. The other day I was browsing through the 2D motion design Slack and someone pretty much asked a question on how to create this rolling text animation within After Effects. And the demonstration or example that she used was this animation here by Clint Studios. The links will be in the description down below. But basically it's this kind of really nice distorted rolling text right over here. So as you can see, kind of just rolls down, kind of like a slot machine type of animation here. Pretty cool stuff. And a lot of people provided some pretty interesting creative solutions and I kind of wanted to tackle that and kind of share with you guys what I kind of created um, based on their input. And so I kind of created two versions, the classical 2D version right here, which kind of has the scrolling uh, rounded text right here. And also a 3D example um, using the actual native 3D extrusion tool um, render in After Effects using Cinema 4D. Um, so this is entirely in After Effects, which is pretty cool. I haven't used the extrusion engine in a long time. And so seeing how it is now, it's pretty fast, a lot faster than when it was first introduced, thankfully. And so it's pretty cool. So I'm gonna show with you guys kind of how I created the distortion look right around here. You can kind of see what's going on here. It kind of distorts. And then it kind of gives you that nice rounded curved look. And this has a lot of implications, a lot of possibilities with it. And you can do this with pretty much anything. It doesn't need to be text, it can be shape layers or you know images or videos or whatever. And so let's go ahead and hop right in. I'm gonna create a new composition. We'll call this rolling distortion. We'll make it 1080p, eight seconds long, hit okay. And so I'm gonna create my text layer right here. I'm gonna call this rolling text. And we're gonna go ahead and just copy this and just paste it and make a really long text layer here just for demonstration purposes. And so you get something like this. We're gonna go ahead and pretty much animate it from the very top right here. Hit a keyframe, we'll move like three and a half seconds. We'll push it through. And so basically what you have now is just scrolling text. So something like this. Now the whole idea is to use displacement maps to actually displace the text the way we want it to. And this is a good little exercise um, using displacement maps and maps and stuff like that. But basically the idea is that if you kind of look at the edges right here, um, we're gonna create two maps, right? One to control the horizontal distortion and then the vertical distortion. So as you can see, when we're closer to the edge right here, um, things get shrunken down vertically but also get shrunken down horizontally as well. So things kind of bend this way and they bend up and down to kind of shrink downwards. And this applies to the very top as well. So it gets kind of distorted up here and shifted to the right. And so the whole idea is that we're gonna create a mat doing just that to our text right here. So let's go ahead and create a new solid right here. And we'll call this horizontal mat. They get 1080p, hit okay. You can try to do this procedurally without recomposing things, but in this particular case, I don't think it's a big deal. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that layer, go to layer and go ahead and hit pre-compose. And we'll call this horizontal mat. And then go ahead and move all attributes to the new composition, hit okay. So we're hopping to that composition real quick. And so the whole idea is we want to leave the center portion untouched, right? This center portion right here should be undistorted. Um, and so to do that with mats, you're gonna to need to make kind of like a gray neutral zone. So I'm gonna select this shape tool right here. Make sure nothing's selected. Make sure the fill is set to this mid gray right here, which is 0, 0, 50% or in RGB terms, 128, 128 over 128 if you're using 8 bits per channel. And so when I do that, it's saying, hey, this zone right here, this part of the map, don't do anything to it, don't distort it. So whatever's in this zone is not going to be included in the actual distortion, basically. So I'm gonna go into the rectangle path and just round out the corners a little bit so it's not as harsh. Move it in like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and blur this thing out a little bit. So I'm gonna apply a blur effect and just apply like a Gaussian blur. Just kind of blur it out a little bit. And we'll uncheck repeat edge pixels. All right, so now that you have the general idea, this center area is gonna be untouched, it's not gonna be distorted, and we're just gonna distort the top of our frame. And so let's go ahead and create, um, let's call this um, middle section. 
And then for our background, I'm going to go ahead and go into layer styles, go ahead and go to layer styles and apply a, I believe a gradient overlay. Yes. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go into the gradient overlay and we're going to angle it the other way like this. So we'll set it to 180 and we're going to go into edit the gradient, right? So we're going to make it white on this side and black on this side. So you want to create something like this. And this is fine tunable. Um, and if we go into the middle section, maybe increase that a little bit, maybe just feather it out just a little bit. So it kind of blends in a little bit. Right. Um, so let me explain. So the way this whole map works is that everything that is black is going to be moved in one direction and everything that is white is going to be moved in another direction, right? So just kind of keep that in mind. It doesn't really matter which direction per se, because we can change that, but just know that everything in the black area is going to be shifted in one direction and everything in the white area is going to be shifted in another direction. Let's go ahead and go back into our actual rolling distortion comp right here. Right. We can go ahead and hide the horizontal map. We don't need to visually see it. We just need to have the map there. And then under the rolling text, I'm going to go ahead and go to effect, distort and add a displacement map. And this is going to use our our mat layer right here to kind of drive the distortion. Right. And so I'm going to go ahead and just copy this purple background, just paste it back in just so we have a background to look at right here. Cool. All right, so what I'm gonna do is go back to the displacement map and go and for the vertical displacement, we're gonna turn this off. You know, we're not gonna distort anything vertically. We're just gonna distort horizontally. We're gonna use the luminance or the, the white values, the bright values of our map. And make sure that our displacement map is actually set to a horizontal mat right here. And, you know, just to be safe, I always use effects and mass. Um, in this particular case, it's probably not needed because it's pre-composed. Um, but you know, if you want to do that, you have the option to. And if we increase the horizontal displacement, you can kind of see what it's doing here, right? It's not distorting vertically, it's distorting horizontally. And you can kind of fine tune this. And so remember what I said, if we go back to our mat right here, um, remember the black value is gonna push it this way to the right, because um, that's the way we define it in our displacement. And then the white values, it's not going to push it to the right. It's going to be pushing to the left. Remember, it's opposite. So black values in this case is pushing it to the right. White values pushing it to the left. And it's doing the same thing on the bottom as well. So you get something like this. Now, if you wanted to make, to make it a lot uh, more like, of a sharper bend, right? You can easily just kind of crank this up a little bit and then go back into our mat and just kind of fine tune it. And I think that we kind of feathered it out a little bit too much if you want it to be harsher we want this air to be unaffected and then all of a sudden it switches straight into the whole gradient and then you get this thing right here. And so what you do is decrease the Gaussian blur to like 150. And then you're going to see a harsh bend. Yep, you see the nice, like the undistorted area right here and it bends pretty hard. Um, and so we want to do that maybe just like 100 or so. You kind of get this. See, so you have just like this, you have that rolling text. All right, so now that we have this kind of distorted text, we'll get rid of the excess a little bit later here, um, or you can tweak the mat, but you can kind of see we get this really nice rolling text. And so now that it's being distorted horizontally, I'm gonna go ahead and shrink it, right? I wanna shrink this text. So this is gonna be normal size, and this distorted area is gonna be a lot smaller to really sell the effect vertically. Um, and so same thing, we're gonna go ahead and create a vertical mat. So I'm gonna create a new solid, call this vertical mat. And I'll just pre-compose it, call this vertical mat. And we'll hop into the vertical mat. And again, we'll just go ahead and borrow this middle section right here, copy it, paste it in. So this is the middle section. And for our vertical distortion, again, we'll go into this vertical mat, solid layer, go to layer styles, or you can use a, you know, a linear ramp or whatever. Apply the gradient overlay right here. And we'll go in here and we'll edit this. And so what we want is um, kind of like this gradient right here to where the black is going to push it um, either down to kind of shrink it and the white's going to push it up to shrink it from the bottom. 
And so what you kind of have, I'll make it a little gray, to kind of blend it in a little bit here. Make these two gray. Um, doesn't need to be exact. Um, it makes a little bit more sense once you see it. So once you have the vertical mat, right, we'll turn this off, go back to our rolling text, and go ahead and add another displacement effect, right? Store displacement map. This is gonna be for the vertical, right? So we'll call this horizontal displacement. We'll call this vertical displacement. Again, we'll set our displacement map to our vertical mat. And we will go ahead and set the horizontal displace to off. And for the vertical displacement, we'll set it to luminance. And we'll go ahead and increase the maximal vertical displacement. And so now you're starting to see what it does here. So this is what it was kind of like before this distorted area right here and right here have normal vertical dimension. Once we increase the displacement, it kind of just crushes everything. And if it's not really moving in the right direction, if this is not moving the way you intended it to be, um, it's probably because the black and white values are flipped and you can always just decrease this in the other direction. So in negative direction. And it should do the quite the exact opposite right here. So instead of shri uh, shrinking it, it's actually expanding it based on the colors. Um, so just something to keep in mind. So just kind of play with it. And the way I mapped it in the original demonstration is I just kind of created a new solid and we'll call this mat. And I just kind of hit it took a little rectangle tool and kind of just cut it off to where I think is a good cutoff, like right here. And I might select these two and just kind of uh, move it down a little bit. Like that. And we'll set it to subtract. So it's kind of what it looks like right here. And for our rolling text, we can use a set mat effect. So go to effect. Uh, channel set mat and we'll set the set we'll set the mat to the actual mat in this case we didn't pre-compose anything we use the mass so we'll make sure that the effects and mass are selected and go ahead and uh, we can invert the mask right here turn this off we don't, need, we don't need to see this mat right here move it to the bottom and so what we have now is like this nice rolling text and you know you can see that the bottom could use some work. We could cut it off a little bit earlier. We can play around with the gradient to kind of tweak that to where it looks more accurate. Um, but that's generally the idea here. And the whole goal is to kind of play around with the mats, play around with the gradients, and really learn how to create really interesting distortions using black and white values and maps to really drive something like this. And of course, all we're doing is adding displacement maps and a set map effect. So you can apply this effect stack to shape layers, images, videos, whatever you want. Pretty cool, um, just play around with it. And in the 3D example, I pretty much did exactly this, but I had um, pretty much three layers here. So a zero, zero, seven, three separate layers. Um, but the whole extrusion and how you do that is you actually go into your composition and go to 3D renderer and it's, and by default it's set to the classic 3D. Switch it to Cinema 4D. Um, well, when you do that, you have a lot of problems. So this is one of the biggest problems that I've experienced. Basically, nothing works. Like mass and effects on layers and shapes don't work. Um, all sorts of motion blur and depth of field doesn't work. Um, blending modes don't work. So all these things don't work. So just something to keep in mind. But basically, I extruded it by going into the material right here went to geometry options and it just increasing the extrusion depth and the bevel amount. And then I pretty much lit it using some lights and then pretty much brought it in and applied the distortion, you know, the whole horizontal and vertical distortion in a separate composition. Then I clipped it and then I pretty much brought it in did some color correction and backgrounds and all that great stuff here. Um, so this is essentially how you kind of create these really nice distorted um, looks. Before I go, I want to give a quick thanks to our sponsor, Squarespace, for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is the only one platform to create an amazing website, whether it's for your store, online business, or portfolio. They have amazing themes to choose from, fully customizable so you can make it the way you want it to look like without having any coding knowledge required. They have awesome 25-hour support, and best of all, if you use your promo code DOJO at checkout, you can actually save 10% off your order and support the dojo. So check it out over at squarespace.com dojo. Squarespace, 
the number one place to create an amazing website. So that's pretty much it guys. This is pretty much how you create this nice little rolling text distortion within After Effects. Let me know what you guys think. Again, you can use this to create a lot of interesting typography, animations, and all sorts of cool distorted looks within After Effects. So check it out. Uh, my name is Vincent Wynn from The Creative Dojo, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.